Hey guys, welcome back to Ants Midwest. Today is a little bit special because this is going to be my first video using my brand new macro lens. You can see there, it says 20 times macro. So that's going to be really nice. It just screws on to this, and then this will clip on to my phone and go over the camera. And it makes some really, for some really good shots. So I'm excited to record my first video using this. So you just slide it right over there. And it looks blurry now, but that's because it's got to be somewhat close to focus in on something. So let's go ahead and take a look at some ants. So here you can see my Aphenogaster tennesseensis and their egg pile. It's growing pretty large now, and that's not all of them. You can actually see that worker there carrying a pretty decent chunk of eggs. Over here, you can see the massive pile of large larva and pupa. They're getting quite a lot now. So their, their numbers should be growing very quickly, very soon. This water droplet is super annoying for filming, but if you look below it, you can see some smaller larvae. There's actually some large larvae there as well, just not quite as far along in their stages as some of the larvae in this pile. But you can see down there, there's a decent amount of larvae as well. Here you can see one of the otter members of the colony. It's actually a male ant. And I'm not sure what's up with how the workers treat him. Um, I don't know if, that, if they're trying to move him to keep him safe. Or if they're going to end up killing him and eating him. But they kind of just pick him up and throw him around like a rag doll. But I think that's pretty cool. Now, I'm guessing that this male is in the colony because the workers are capable of laying infertile eggs. And the reason that they can do that is as an, another food source. They will eat those infertile eggs. But if they hatch, then they end up being a male ant. If you look closely, you'll see some really bright red, not on the workers, but next to the larva there. That's from a fruit fly that I fed to them recently. I actually fed them a bunch of fruit flies, so you might be able to see a couple. The fruit flies are one of their favorite foods. Um, I'm not sure if it's because they enjoy to hunt them, or they just... It, they, how easy it is for them to feed on them, but they really enjoy fruit flies. Looking down there, you can see some more fruit flies being fed on by larvae. Here you can see the most important member of the colony, the mother of all the ants within the colony, kind of hiding now. That is the beautiful queen. I've said this in past videos, but you may not have seen past videos. She's super similar to the workers. She's really just about the same size, maybe a tiny bit bigger. And the main difference is that she is all shiny, while the workers are only shiny in the gaster. Another difference is her gaster is larger, but it can be pretty difficult to notice. As you can tell here, they're starting to move the brood out, so let's go ahead, and they're, they're actually rushing the sugar water test tube. Whenever I open up their nest and let light in, they all seem to rush out and gather in the sugar water test tube. So I'm going to let them get back to their darkness. Looking here into the sugar water test tube for my Aphenogaster rudis, 
you can actually see there's quite a bit of mites in there. Now, ooh, I'm shaky. These are supposedly non-harmful mites. That would be great if it would focus. Um, again, but... So as I was saying, they're not harmful mites, but they could end up being a problem if there's too many of them. Um, so if that happens to be the case, I would just have to buy some predatory mites for these mites and decrease their population. And there is an Aphenogaster rudis worker drinking from the sugar water test tube. It's really great. I've been starting to see these workers a lot more often these days. They're far less shy to the lights and to my voice, so hopefully I'll be able to record them more often now. And there is another worker of Aphenogaster rudis on the wall of the outworld. Now, the last colony that we're going to take a nice close look at is my Campanotus suburbatus. This colony has several queen elates, I believe it's three, as well as some males and a queen. Um, I believe that the colony's queen is belonging to that gaster there, right up against the water cotton. There's one of the, a couple of the elates. Another one of them. I don't believe that they have any brood yet, but I believe that will be coming pretty soon. You can see here, there's actually a male right there. The real dark one is a male. Not a great angle for filming on that back wall, but there's also two or three males in this colony. I really like how these look. They, I like to compare them to a bee, just because they kind of have that yellowish color in their gaster between the black stripes. And they love sugar water. That's mostly what they eat, is sugar water. But they have taken some proteins. Um, you can kind of see a cricket leg sticking out of the entrance there. Now, I'm surprised that the queen isn't doing it now. But for the most part, she spends her time up here in this section, standing at the entrance of the nest, which I find quite odd. I'm not sure what that behavior is about, but it's kind of cool. So anyways, I really hope that you're enjoying the new quality of my videos with this macro lens. I think it helps out a ton. Um, I can just get much closer up shots with higher quality and it, it looks amazing to me. So that's going to do it for today's video. Please like and subscribe. Check out some of my other videos and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah, I just ended the video, and I don't know what's going on right now, but, like, most of the colony of the Phenogaster rudis is out of the nest, including the queen. Like, what happened? Why did they all just suddenly show up? That's so weird. I've been seeing the queen so much these days, and I don't understand what's going on. It almost makes me nervous, like, maybe the colony isn't doing well, but I don't know, man. It's so weird to me. Like, why is the colony suddenly all pretty much entirely in the outworld portion of their nest? If you have any ideas why this is going on, please let me know, because... While it's very cool and enjoyable to watch these workers that I haven't been able to see much of lately, and cool to be able to see the queen, it is kind of concerning because this is some abnormal behavior. So, a little worrisome, but also cool, so just let me know if you know why they might be doing this. Alright, bye.